Hey there, welcome to I Can, I Am, I Will, the podcast designed to motivate and encourage you so you can build your confidence and get empowered. Today, we are going to talk about luck and the limiting belief that other people have the things that you want or the things that you are trying to obtain because they got lucky. For those of you who are new here, my name is Lindsay. With this podcast, we talk about concepts and topics that are going to help you build your confidence and get empowered so you can do the things that you want to do, build your self-worth, live a life that you will love, be happy, reduce some stress, you know, all that good stuff. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. You can contact me, find transcripts, of episodes, read articles, and support the podcast at canandwill.com. I talked about limiting beliefs a few episodes, I think in like the 30s. And a limiting belief can be when we attribute someone else's success to luck. People do get lucky. They have opportunities that are given to them. They are born into certain situations. People do, they get lucky. However, not everyone's success is based on luck. And if we reduce other people's success to being luck, we are limiting ourselves. An example would be, uh, well, here, I'll give you a real life example. Um, <laughs> I was trying to think of one. I'm like, well, I could just give, give one from my life. I, when I was working in an office before like working from home, I would get up at seven in the morning. I would go to the gym. I would do an hour long workout. Then I would do 10 minutes of stretching like yoga. And then I would do 10 minutes of meditation. And then I would go into the sauna from there, I would come home, I would check my email, then I would take a shower, then I would check my email again, and then I would make steel cut oats and have a protein shake and I would go into the office. One day, I'm um, coming into the office and this woman, who, awesome woman, I loved her, she was one of my favorite colleagues actually, she was sitting at her desk and I came in, I had like my oats in one hand, like my protein shake in another and my hair is like still a little wet <laughs> from my after my post gym shower. And we're talking about something and she's eating. God, I talked about this in another episode, a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Mm. <laughs> so she's eating this Chick-fil-A sandwich and she's drinking a diet soda. at like nine o'clock in the morning. And she's telling me about how lucky I am to be naturally thin. And she's talking about how like she's having trouble losing weight. And she wants to lose weight and she can't. She feels like she can't. And then just how lucky I am to be naturally slim. So in her mindset, she's looking at me and she's thinking, and it's not just me. I'm not taking this personally. She looks at other people who are slim and she limits herself and thinks, oh, they're just lucky. She did not know that I lost 40 pounds, had been maintaining that weight loss for for a few years, and then gained 10 pounds back when I started working at that company because it was a tech company and they had a lot of chocolate chip cookies laying around. And they did um, they did a catered lunch and they had a salad bar, but I was not hitting up that salad bar because they had like really good stuff. So then I gained, I lost the 40 pounds. I gained 10 pounds back once I started working there. And then I lost the 10 pounds again and started going back to like my healthy eating choices. She has no idea all of this is going on. She had no idea that when she's getting up and going to Chick-fil-A, I'm leaving the gym and making steel cut oats. The steel cut oats were probably half the amount of calories just in the sandwich alone. Then the diet soda is just empty calories. I have not drank a soda. Oh, man. I'm going to say three years. It's probably been about like three years. And then before that, 
like the five years before that, I would drink soda maybe every once in a while. Or I would ask friends, I'd be like, do you care if I have a shot of soda? And they would like just pour me like a little bit of their soda <laughs> just for the flavor. Now, I don't think I'd be able to do it. I don't think I'd like it. I, my flavor, my taste have changed dr- like drastically. So she doesn't know all of that, all of the background. And she's just contributing that to luck. When it's not luck. Oh, and mind you, also, she's at her sitting desk. I, I, I'm at a standing desk. And at my standing desk, I drink so much water that I'm constantly like moving to and from the bathroom. Like Just in the office itself, I'd probably get 10,000 steps. And if I wanted to have a conversation with someone, I would walk over and talk to them instead of emailing them because I was standing anyway. So standing would contribute to me being more active. So she doesn't see she doesn't see everything behind the scenes. She just sees me now and thinks I'm lucky because I'm naturally slim. And a lot of times people in my position may get upset like, "Oh, they're not focusing on all the hard work and dedication I put in." But for me instead I look at it and I think, "Wow, it's such a shame she's limiting herself." Because she can do this too. And I don't want to give unsolicited advice. So I just told her, I'm like, well, you know, I lost weight. And she's like, oh, really? I was like, yeah. And I just focused on like calories and stuff like that and eating like healthier, making healthier decisions while still having proportion because I want, I don't want to restrict myself. And I, I left it at that. If she wanted to know more, she would have asked me. But this is a way that you might be limiting yourself is if you think that people have what they have just because they are lucky. And yes, there are people who are lucky. I had one colleague, she would say like they're born at third. It's easier when you're born on third base. Yes. Some people are very fortunate to be born into families that have the resources to give them a better education or to pay for an expensive school or to buy them a car so they don't have to wait for the bus because it's very time consuming. It can also be very stressful when the bus doesn't show up. If you live in the Philadelphia region and you've ever taken SEPTA, you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) So yes, some people are luckier than others. However, we don't want to just attribute anyone's success to luck we don't want to make that generalization that cognitive distortion episode i think 68 general over generalization we don't want to generalize and think that people who have what we have just have it because they're lucky because when we do that we limit ourselves and think that we can't have it because we're quote unquote not lucky when if you just focus with hard work and dedication, you will be able to succeed and achieve the things that you want to achieve that you see other people have. And I'm not saying everything. I'm not saying you could be like the president of the United States or whatever. However, if there's something that you want like weight loss or promotion or a certain position, or if you want to go to a specific school, you can work towards a scholarship There are things that you can do, but you might not take that action or you might feel stuck if you're limiting yourself and contributing other people's successes to luck. When you catch yourself thinking, oh, they're just lucky or, oh, they were born on third base, stop yourself and then put it into perspective. Maybe they did have more opportunities than you were given. However, how can you Make it so you can be quote unquote lucky. So you can do the things that you want to do. Because when you focus on that, then you will do them. But you're not going to do them if you're feeling stuck and like you can't. With that, we are going to end with our eye affirming statements. You can say them with me. You do not have to. You can do whatever makes you feel confident and comfortable. Are you ready? I can, I am, I will. Have a great day.